Kashima Antlers got their 2024 J1 League season off to a flyer last week with a thumping 3-0 win at Nagoya Grampus. Today, their home opener with expectations rising that this year could see a first title since 2016. Welcome along to Kashima Soccer Stadium for Kashima Antlers versus Sadezo Osaka. Antlers were brilliant last week, registering 15 attempts on goal and dominating most attacking metrics in that statement success over Nagoya Grampus. The challenge now is to follow up that win with another today. The experienced Ranko Popovic has taken over as coach at Kashima Antlers, whose new look 4 2 3 1 formation with Alexander Chavrich as its focal point. They paid dividends last week, and it seems certain that they will start much better than they did in 2023 when they won only two of their first eight matches. That stuttering opening left them off the pace and a faster start is required this time around if they are to challenge for top honours. So that's what Osaka drew their first game of the new campaign at home to FC Tokyo last week, but are an ambitious club aiming to be alongside the J-League elite in 2024. Hayato Nakama made his 100th J1 appearance last week against Nagoya and is celebrated ahead of kickoff here. Well, last season, Sereso spent much of the summer in the fight for the top three spots in the Champions League, places that come with them, but things turned against them late in the season the Sakura lost six of their last eight, taking them from fourth place all the way down to their finishing position of ninth. The problem was a misfiring attack as they scored just once in their final eight fixtures of the season. Well, last week, Kayato Nakama led the way for Kashima netting twice, while Chavrich scored on his debut as Antlers looked like a team that is ready to make good on their dream of competing for the league title. It wasn't quite as smooth for Sorezzo in their opener, but goals from Kapishaba and Shunta Tanaka were enough to earn them a 2-2 draw with FC Tokyo. The Sakura made a slew of big signings in the winter, so it might take a little time for the team to gel. Let's check out the teams for you. Kashima, Antlers make one ultimate to the side that defeated Nagoya 3-0 away last weekend with Tomoya Fuji is starting in place of Shomadoi who drops to the bench. It's 4-2-3-1 for the hosts with Alexander Chavrich as the central striker. The Slovakian netted on his debut last week and scored nine goals in 15 appearances for Slovan Bratislava this season before his January loan move to the J-League. He will be key to the fortunes of Antlers over the course of 2024. Watch out for Nakama on the left-hand side as well. Our referee is Hayato Shimitsu. The 40-year-old official stood in Gamba Osaka's 1-1 draw with top-flight newcomers Machida Zelvia last week, awarding one penalty and issuing a red card. On VAR duty for us today is Naoto Uihara. boys in the booth hopefully won't be too busy today but we shall see over the course of the 90 minutes here as we check out the Sarezo Osaka side they also make one change from match week one right Uya Nishio gets a first start of the season in place of Koji Toriumi who is absent it's 4-1-2-3 in possession for the visitors with Leo Sierra through the middle Lucas Fernandez and Capixaba complete an all Brazilian attacking trident Shunta Tanaka who scored last week in the draw with FC Tokyo is charged with being the holding midfielder. It is an attacking lineup and formation. We'll see just how ambitious Akio Kogiko's side are when the match gets underway. Shinji Kagawa looks like he's going to play a little further forward than he did last season. It will be fascinating to find out. Ranko Popovic, who's got an awful lot of experience in Japanese football, but was most recently coaching in Europe, comes back to Japan here, taking over from Daiki Iwamasa. Akio Kogiko, of course, was a long-time assistant at Sarezzo Osaka before stepping up to be the first-team coach some three years ago. Well, we're at Kashima Soccer Stadium in Ibaraki, just north of the city centre for Kashima Antlers versus Sarezzo Osaka. And if recent meetings are anything to go by, this should be a tight encounter. Kashima Antlers did win both games by just a solitary goal last season. 
So here we go, match week two of the 2024 J-League campaign. It's Kashima Antlers versus Serezo Osaka. Both teams aiming to build on positive starts to their campaigns. Much expected from both sides. It could potentially be dark horses for the title. Underway at Kashima Soccer Stadium then. Kashima Antlers in red with the visitors, Serezo Osaka, all in white. Just how ambitious will Serezo be in their first away game of the campaign? They failed to win any of their last five on their travels last season. Four defeats and one draw. The last success coming way back in late August against Yokohama FC, a 1-0 victory. Really found it difficult on their travels last season. That has to improve if they are to challenge for top honours this season. Bit of a whack here for Chavrich, who's gone down. Very, very impressive last week on his debut. Scored one, made one in a 3-0 success over Nagoya. Brought to the club by Ranko Popovic. He believes that Chavrich can really fire Kashima Antlers to some silverware this season. Slovakian international, though he hasn't played for the national side for a good number of years. Now his last cap back in June of 2017, but played really well, both domestically and indeed in continental play in Europe before coming to Japan. A loan deal initially with an option to buy. Something of a false start to the fixture here because we had Chavrich go down a few moments ago and now Leo Sierra's gone down, uh, rather Lucas Fernandez has gone down at the other end. Sign from Consadoli Sapporo uh, last season. Attacking player who will feature on the right hand side of a forward three. Really struggled for goals last season. Didn't score in the league and more of a creator than a goal scorer, but his output has to be upped, you sense, for Serezo Osaka if they are to try and potentially win back a place in the Asian Champions League. Let's see what Kashima Antlers can do here. Arms have gone up and the flag eventually follows on that far side. Certainly looked to be in an offside position when the ball was played forward. Tomoya Fuji who comes into the starting lineup. Was a substitute last week. He was a yard offside, wasn't he there? Just the one goal last season was in the 3-1 away success against Yokohama FC back in March of last year, previously at San Fritchi. Gets a go here in place of uh, Shomadoi, who drops to the bench. Really tight games between the two last season, as we mentioned. Just the two goals scored across the two games. Kashima Antlers securing a 1-0 success at home and a 1-0 win away from home as well. They did have a player sent off midway through the first half. Uh, Kashima Antlers in the uh, corresponding fixture in 2023. Diogo Pitusa was red carded, but they still managed to get over the line in a good battling defensive display after scoring early. And then Sarezzo Osaka had a player sent off in the reverse fixture in Osaka where Nuejo was sent off 19 minutes before time, four minutes after Ikuma Sekikawa uh, scored the only goal of the game. So tight encounters last season. Prior to that, the uh, two teams shared six goals equally. 3-3 draw between the pair here back in July of 2022. Goal late in second half, it was 1-1 at the break. And Everaldo's 89th minute equaliser for Kashima Antlers secured a point for today's hosts. So that's Osaka with a free kick. Ninth finish last season for Serezzo. They were very good defensively. It was almost all or nothing. They only drew four games across 2023 in the league. The joint fewest amount of draws, along with Koyoto Sanga, joint fourth best defensive record. And they were fourth as late as September, but only won one of their last eight 
in the league. It was a real disappointment. Capi Shabba will play it back to the edge of the penalty area here. That's a clever touch. What can Serezo Osaka do here? Dangerous looking ball in. Hayakawa punches, doesn't really get the ball. It bounces through and then cleared away by Nono. Referee halting play. Mario Sierra, who scored 12 goals last season, wasn't on the score sheet last weekend. Capishaba, who did score against FC Tokyo, thumping header from close in. Came in January 23 from Juventus, the Brazilian side. And it's an interesting trio now with Lucas Fernandes joining in. Gel. Can they combine for Seretsu Osaka over the course of not just this fixture but the season as well? They'll be prompted by the likes of Shinji Kagawa. Vastly experienced former Japanese international who had 13 years in Europe, of course, with the likes of Borussia Dortmund and Manchester United. Defensive work from Nishio coming into the side today. First start of the season, first appearance of the season. Only started three games last campaign, was a near regular the season before that. He's just lost his way a little bit, having broken into the side at a, an early age as a teenager. Flick forward for Chavrich. Something of a surprise move for the player that scored 52 goals for Slovan Bratislava in 178 appearances, had a spell in Belgian football with Racing Genk, also played in Denmark briefly. Did lose their first home game of last season, incidentally, Kashima Antlers, they went down 2-1 to Kawasaki Frontale, but as we mentioned previously, they got off to a horror start. They only won one of their first seven, put them on the back foot immediately. They didn't manage to make it through to the quarter-finals of the League Cup. They were beaten by Nagoya Grampus 2-1 on aggregate, knocked out early of the Emperor's Cup, beaten on penalties in a wild shootout against Ventforit uh, Kofu. Extraordinary shootout went all the way through to the uh, the keepers. Kim, just inside his own penalty area, will claim. 26th time that Kim jin Hun is playing against Kashima Antlers. He's been a regular for Seretsu Osaka for a long, long time. He's approaching 500 league appearances for them in the previous 25 starts against the team that he faces today. He's only managed two clean sheets. He's been on the losing side 19 occasions. He's not got the best of records, to say the least, against Kashima Antlers. Shootout loss was in the third round to Venfri Kofu. Sadetsu Osaka managed to go one round further before going down to Shonan Belmare, also on spot kicks. Losing 5 4. Back heel doesn't quite come off from Higuchi. It's a slice clearance that might come back towards the midfielder. And the shot on the half volley from Anzai is blocked. Kashima Antlers will try again. This is Sano. Javrich waits, edge of the penalty area. Players in red getting in advanced positions, curled in towards Chavrich, clear to the edge of the area towards Anzai. Sliding challenge from Sano, just trying to win the ball back a little higher. That's clever from Capishaba, though, who rides one challenge and then is eventually brought down. Skipped over the first, can't avoid the second. Well, open game in the first nine minutes or so. Nodded away by Anzai. Left back who really likes to get forward, had a spell in European football in Portugal with Porto Menense. Former Tokyo Verde player and Japanese international, hasn't been part of the 
national side set up for the last few years. Because Fernandez moves away. Five years at Constantly Sapporo after signing from Fluminense. So that's Osaka did lose their last game away from home last season against Alberex Nikata, going down by a goal to nil. They failed to score in their last five on their travels. Managed to clean sheet in their last two since the nil-nil draw with San Fletcher. Only one in their last five away from home. Didn't win any of their first three away last season. Their fourth game on their travels was against FC Tokyo, a 2-1 win. And after that, they won the next three on the spin away. Goals were always a little bit of an issue for them last season, just 39 to be better. Free kick here, Lucas Fernandez will take. Funaki standing in an offside position. He will jump back onside. It's a highish line here from Kashima Antlers. Lucas Fernandez will curl in. Zato will let it run through for Capishaba. It is Nobarazato again. Signed ahead of this season from Kawasaki Frontale. That's neatly worked. Because Fernandez will play it back. This is Makikuma. Okuno gets back up on his feet quickly and then wins a corner. Only managed one goal from corners last season, Sedetsu Osaka. Joint fewest in the top division in Japan. It was a problem for them. Didn't really create as much as maybe they should do, but with Lucas Fernandez on flag kick taking duty, might be a little bit different this time around, potentially. He can deliver a ball. Let's see what he can come up with here. Outswinger. Decent delivery, just flicks up off the head of uh, Leo Sierra. Maybe should have done better with that. Maikuma will recycle. Flicked on. And just dribbles out of play, unfortunately, for Seretsu Osaka. Quite get enough on that one as it spun towards him. Difficult opportunity. Because Fernandez on this near side doing well initially, and it was a bit of a shove here, wasn't there? On Akuno, got back up on his feet smartly enough. Busy start by both of these teams, though. You sense here, it's a late challenge. It might be a yellow card as well here. You know, it will be a yellow card. Apologies offered here from uh, Higuchi. Should uh, Tanaka goes down late. That's poor. Might be a blue card in a few years' time, that one. Higuchi gets the yellow. Or have they been shelved now, potentially? Good record against uh, Sereto Osaka. Two goals in ten previous appearances. Only been on the losing side twice. Again here from Sarazzo Osaka and uh, Leo Sierra in particular. It's the ball back quickly. Last goal coming against uh, Gamba Osaka in the derby back in October. 1-0 home success. Title winner with uh, Yokohama F. Marinos. 21 in 58 before moving uh, to Sarazzo Osaka. will take the throw, Fernandez wants it back, Maikuma for Nisho. Now 
Jones with Funaki. Towards Capishaba. Okono. Touched back by Kagawa. Funaki. Tanaka. Touch from Nobrezato. Go forwards, hoping to hit Okuno. Kishima Antlers just struggling at the minute. Most of the play, most of the possession has certainly been from uh, Seretsu Osaka. They are a side that did enjoy more possession than most last season. The average 52.1% in contrast to Kashima Antlers 47.8. Now, obviously, there's been a change of coach and a change of formation in that 4 2 3 1 that. Uh, Kashima Antlers employ now, you would have thought might give them a little bit more of the ball. That's not been the case in the opening 15 minutes here. Haven't settled just yet. Sano will play it back. Ueda. Should be kept in play by Kachinen. That's a corner. Block from Funaki. Five goals last season. Last coming against Sakantosu from the spot back in August. Former Kawasaki front Harley player. Higuchi will take the corner. More assist than any other player for Kashima Antlers last season with 10. In comes the corner from Higuchi. High and nodded towards goal, cleared away by Nishio. And then Lucas Fernandez looks to prod it forward, and the breakaway is on very much here for Sedezo Osaka. Kagawa is calling for it from Sierra, lets it run through his boots. Fernandez is shot. Fine save. Got down really well. Hayakawa to deny Lucas Fernandez. The breakaway was on. You tended to think here the touch from Shinji Kagawa wasn't great. Good movement initially, and then as the ball came towards Kagawa, well, he got a, a toe to it, didn't he? I'm not quite sure if he meant to play it into the path of Lucas Fernandez, but he did. Fernandez's shot was on target, relatively comfortably saved by Tomoki Hayakawa. Sign of things to come. Lucas Fernandez with a corner again, whipped in and glanced towards that far post. Well, half-hearted appeals for a penalty. It certainly struck Segi Kawa, but uh, no other player really turned towards the referee. I tend to think the initial header should have been better. Both of these teams scored with headers last week. Kashima Antlers weren't particularly prolific scoring from headed efforts last season, just the six, second fewest in the division. 12 for Seretsu Osaka, which was joint second. Sienna managed six himself. Fed back by Segi Kawa. Yeah, Kawa takes a chance, but manages to clear. Uh, last season, Tomoki Hayakawa managed 15 clean sheets, terrific record. Joint most in the uh, J League. Nine of those 15 were at home, which was a league high. But he's been called into action in the opening 18, 19 minutes here. For Hayakawa, he was on the books of uh, Yokohama F. Marinos as a youth team player before going to Meiji University. Debut season just three years ago in 2022, three seasons back. Much average so far has been starved of service. We've seen him run the channel just the once so far.
him to clear. Novarazato on that left-hand side. This is Funaki. Forward by Michio. Capishaba. Kagawa's on the move inside. Capishaba goes down again. And twice now he's been brought down in the opening 20 minutes. It's a battle to look out for. Tanaka. Funaki goes long. It's a shove by Lucas Fernandez. It's a bit unnecessary. Doesn't look too concerned, does he? Bit of a shove in the back. And another day, that might be a card. Uh, Cookie Anzai goes down. Doesn't look uh, that bothered, does he? Lucas Fernandez. Did you see there, bottom of your screen, that uh, Ranko Popovic, the, um, the coach of uh, Kashima Antlers, not happy about something. I'm not sure he's getting across to the fourth official. Beaten in three at home, two draws though in that sequence for Kashima Antlers. Did win their last game last season against Yokohama FC. Only two wins in their last six in all competitions. They've scored in their last two and indeed nine of their last ten. They've scored more than one, only once in their last six. They've been narrow wins when they have won. Anzai loses out and it's Terezo who come forward once again, that's a clever ball to the right-hand side as Akuno gets it inside the area. For Naki, for Tanaka, here is Tanaka again. Nobarazato. For Naki, for Nishio. Maikuma. Lucas Fernandez. Maikuma again. It's good football if they can work it down this right-hand side. Not quite, and Kashima Antlers have a throw. Anzai. Awkward touch, Lucas Fernandez makes it his, just about controls before shuffling it inside. This is Capishaba looking for Sierra. Barazato helps it back. Tanaka, Lucas Fernandez. Cool towards Sierra, and it's dropped here. It might fall for Capishaba, keepers in no man's land. Has to race back towards his six yard box. There were so many. Kashima Antlers plays inside the penalty area. Referee is allowed play to go on here. Lucas Fernandez once again. Sanetsu Osaka very much on the up. They're the better side at the minute. Good looking ball again. Kapishaba! Fine save! Hayakawa somehow keeps that one out. Brilliant reaction down to his right. He knows that was a big, big chance. They've been the better side in the opening quarter of this fixture. Didn't quite hit it as he wanted, but in many ways that meant a more difficult stop. They haven't been at the races, have they, really? Much the better side. Lucas Fernandez. No breakthrough just yet. Momentum can shift fair 
really quickly. Rodel look a little bit defensively, according to the expected goals metrics last season, Sereto Osaka. They conceded 34, their XGA was nearly 44. You might think there could be some regression this season, but if anything, the expected goal figure will be pulled towards their actual goal number if the opening 25 minutes of this fixture is anything to go by. It's obviously a terribly small sample size, but been impressed with Sereso Osaka so far. Kagawa tries to flick it on. Javric just has not had a look in. The side that was so impressive last week, well, very disappointing so far. It's a Kagawa that went down. I think that was meant for Capi Shabba, but it was overhit by quite some time, uh, quite some way. Well, Kashima Antlers just have not got going, have they? 26 minutes in, and opportunities for the home side have been few and far between. Five attempts from Sereto Osaka, four of which have been on target. Sixty-five percent possession as well so far in this fixture. Kapishaba. Still they haven't scored. Nil-nil. Kapishaba again to turn. Use his strength and industry. Yosiela wants it through the centre, can he thread it through? Can he help it on towards Kagawa? Not quite. Still Sereto Osaka on the attack though here, Maikuma to curl in. Just over the head of Kagawa, can he take it down? It's towards Yosiela. It's a really good approach play so far. It's just the last act of putting the ball in the back of the net, which is so often the case. Lucas Fernandez threads it through. Kagawa back to Lucas Fernandez. Wonderful football. But Sereso Osaka can't create that clear cut opportunity. And Kashima Antlers come away with possession. Not for long. Kapi Shabat again. Were Sereso Osaka guilty of over elaboration, maybe? Maikuma. Tanaka. Obrazato. This is Funaki. Nishio to his right. Here is Ruya Nishio. Just trying to bait the press here a little bit, aren't they? Trying to draw Kashima Antlers towards them. Certainly got the talent further forward to play through Kashima Antlers. We've seen that already in the opening 29 minutes. Just one win in their last nine. Played a couple of friendlies. They defeated Chambori of Thailand 4-2. They were beaten by uh, Patton United. An Asia challenge friendly. That's the last three games of last season. Sereto Osaka, disappointing end to the campaign. Knocked out the uh, League Cup in the group stages. Different competition, different type of competition this season, incidentally, for the secondary uh, cup in Japan. Um, 
stats, 212 passes to 74 in uh, Seleso Osaka's favour. We mentioned those shots and chances created previously. Kapishaba runs into trouble, gets back up on his feet, can't quite win it back. Kashima Handlers do better. This is Chavrich. There is an opportunity for Sano maybe to get forward. And Tai. Back for Segi Kawa. This is Ueda. Kapishaba has been in the thick of everything, hasn't he, over on that left-hand side. So had a very good opening half an hour. Biggest chance has dropped his way. Nakama. Anzai. Touch from Higuchi. This is Nakama again. Back for Segi Kawa. And Hayakawa will take a touch. He's made the stops, hasn't he, so far? Two big ones. One of sorts and a good reaction save down low to his right. Anzai. Segikawa. Ueda. If Kishima Antlers just begun to find a little bit of rhythm here. Most of the play inside their own half, but resting in possession. And just trying to get a handle on this lively Sadetsu Osaka outfit. Nakama can't keep it in play. Just his prowess in the Slovakian top division, but also played really well in the Europa Conference League uh, this season, incidentally, for Slovan Bratislava. Scored some uh, four goals in uh, Europe's uh, newest club competition, tertiary competition in many ways, but one that's been well received in Europe. Also scored in the Champions League qualifiers as well. They eventually were knocked out by Maccabi Haifa in the third qualifying round and then lost out to uh, Aris in the Europa League qualifiers to drop into the Conference League. But Slovan Bratislava put up some good performances in a tricky group. And Chavrich was very much part of that. But deciding to come to Japan, Slovan Bratislava's loss is very much Kashima Antler's game. But we've seen little of him after a brilliant debut last weekend. His home bow has been a little different. So far, at least. 32 minutes in, Kashima Antlers nil, Sadetsu Osaka nil. Thought it might be tight, but this has been fairly open. Tight in terms of the scoreline, not necessarily in terms of what we've seen on the pitch. Kim. Needs to try and play through the press here. They've invited it. What can they do to play through it? Nishio's touch towards Maikuma. Here is Nishio again. Rosato, Nisho, Maikuma. Lucas Fernandez nearly made it work. Now Sierra chases it down, as does Hiroki Akuno. Oh, that's good play from Segikawa. Forward by Nakama. Fernandez, who's almost certain to get a yellow card, you sense after one or two challenges in the opening 33 minutes here. Nakama, who got two against uh, Nagoya Grampus. He scored the one last season, so he's already having a much better campaign than he did last term. Chavrich to turn and use his pace and strength. Does he win a corner? He does. Nine goals from corners last season, and in stark contrast to Sadetsu Osaka, they knew exactly what to do with corner kicks. That's the most. Yuma Suzuki 
Made him with six goal uh, with four goals from corners, incidentally. But last season top goal scorer because of the arrival of this man, he's only on the bench. 14 last season. Useful substitute to have, certainly. Huguchi. Something a little bit different here to the edge of the area. Curled towards that far post by K. Chinen. But cleared away. Lucas Fernandez is on the move. Capi Sharber is making up giant strides if he can spot him. It's a good block and a free kick. Good defensive work from Kimito Nono. Well, that's three I make it for Lucas Fernandez. What's it going to take for Lucas Fernandez to, to get a caution here? Next challenge, I reckon. <laughs> He's a bit more apologetic here. Picked up uh, three yellow cards uh, last season. Lee Kai was six a few years ago, these Constantoli Sapporo days. He was sent off early on in his career in the, uh, the J League against San Francisco Hiroshima back in June 2019. Issue here for Lucas Fernandez. Concern for Akio Kogiku. Never a professional footballer, he only played at uh, university, but he was long-time assistant coach at Sadatsu Osaka before taking over as first-team coach. <laughs> Just holding the hamstring there, look, there we go, is that three or four? Well, I made it three, maybe the referee says four. One more and into the book, that's if he continues, because he's a bit of a doubt here. What's the, uh, the prognosis here? He's Moving gingerly to this near side, he's shaking his head at the moment. This could be the Brazilian's last act. Probably saved himself a caution if he does come off. So that's what Osaka supporters look on with concerned glances to their winter signing. Watch the chat here. OK to continue. There's one or two thumbs up. Uh, this doesn't look good, though, for the Brazilian, does it? Because it looks like a change is to be made, yeah. But he's been lively. He's been uh, borderline reckless on a couple of occasions as well. But um, from an attacking point of view, with the ball at his feet, he's good and he will be a miss. Segikawa. Flag sure is going to go up here. In the end, Nishio comes across. Will be a free kick. World over, the flag seems to go later and later. So Lucas Fernandez has gone off, and Hirotaka Tameda. Here's the player that has uh, come on, did come on as a substitute last week as well. The 30-year-old has got a lot of experience with uh, Trita and Jeff United player for a long time. He's only been on the winning side once against Kashima Antlers in his career. Shooting up for the eighth time against them here. We'll see what he can do. Just the two goals last season. And a bit part player, really, over the last couple of campaigns. Never... Uh, Regular, but has had enough starts. Marching towards 50 for the club. Leo Sierra. Ooh, kicks the ball away there. And I think the Kashima Antler players are just suggesting, look, hang on. You're going to do that. This is a card. The referee's been fairly lenient. Did to produce that yellow card very early on for Yuto Gucci, but... Since then, has let one or two things go. Thumped away by Segikawa. Sienna towards Kapishaba. Just wonder if there's going to be a little bit of a change here. Well, Kapishaba does well. 
Plays it uh, in field. A heavy touch, though, unfortunately, for Leo Sierra. Maikuma. From Kagawa's touch, Maikuma again. Inside's a little awkward. It's another throw. So pressure kept up here by Sarezzo Osaka, looking for the breakthrough. Five minutes to go until half time. There will be a good few minutes of added on time, I would have thought. We've had a few injuries. Kagawa, Maikuma, flicked inside the area. Leo Sierra tries to play it in. It's that intricate play inside the area which just isn't coming off at the moment for Sarezzo Osaka. They've had plenty of touches inside the opposition penalty area. They really should be doing. A little bit more with it for my money. Still got some wonderful touches, hasn't he? Shinji Kagawa. Did feature in every single league game last season, didn't start them all, nearly did. 31 in the starting lineup. 161 appearances now coming back in uh, February of uh, last year. Winner with Manchester United, twice a title winner with Dortmund and a cup winner with Dortmund. Some spells in Turkish, Greek, and Belgian football, and we're just shy of 100 caps for his country. Hasn't been capped for a few years now, and won't get to the century. Funaki for Nishio. Touch from Tanaka. Nobarazato. Here's again. Does look like Kabishawa's come to this right hand side, doesn't it? And Sierra through the centre and the substitute to Maeda over on that left hand side. The interesting one is um, see what Kabishawa can do here. It's going to be a throw. It's Nobarazato. He's not only the left back, but he seems to be coming in almost an underlapping left back at the minute. Size turn to try and halt Kapishaba. This is Kagawa. Kapishaba. Shimmy in a shuffle, but no joy on getting through. And then Kagawa will curl, but that's easy for Hayakawa. Wait up. Playing good determination here. Javric wants it. Has he got the pace to get there? Cleared by Kim. A lot harder work than last week for Alexander Javric. Well, that Lucas Fernandez injury and subsequent substitution of the Brazilian. Maybe you've just upset the. Uh, Natural order for Sarezzo Osaka in terms of their attacking three. They've had to bring Hirataka Tameda on to play on the left-hand side and switch Kapishaba to the right. So just getting used to that at the moment, it would appear. Not quite as on the front foot as they were for much of this first half, but they've been the better side, that is for sure. Kim to thump forwards. Sierra seemed to jump fairly early. Ishio. Kagawa. Obrazato. Just well, look where Obrazato is. Normally the left back. Interesting position. Tanaka. Obrazato. Fanaki for Nishio. Obrazato over on the left-hand side now. 
Mm, just sort of regular left back trying to get forward. This is Kagawa dropping deep. It is Nobrazato. Tamera. Sierra has to go back, kept in play just Kagawa. Probe away, looking for an opening. Tanaka's touch. Nishio decides to come forward. Kashima Antlers pushing up a little bit. Tameda wants it over on the left hand side. Good play from Mai Kuma, still has it. Tameda. Kuma, it's on his right side, why not have a crack? Well, Tomoki Hayakawa claimed it well. Kuma, who scored just once in the league last since his last uh, goal came in the Emperor's Cup against Centre Kore back in June, last goal in the league against Kashiwa Reisol in April. Made his uh, Japanese debut back in September and was included in the national team squad for the Asian Cup. Of course, Japan lost to Iran in the quarter-final, 2-1 reverse. He did play in that game, Maikuma. A disappointment for Japan, given how well they did in the World Cup, of course, and how much they were lauded in Qatar for their performances out in the Middle East. They were brilliant, weren't they? Not expected to get out of the group stages, but... Terrific performances against the likes of Spain and Germany. Three minutes of added on time. We've had a minute of those three. The way that. Better from Kashima Antlers in the last 10 or so. Sarazzo Sakura have been pushed back. And tight. The ball is gone. to get in the game more, not necessarily his fault. The um, supply line has been well shut off by Seretso Osaka. So last act, potentially, of uh, a first half that's been good to watch. There's been plenty of cotton thrust. Seretso Osaka from Maimon have been the better side. Kashima Antlers come back into it slightly. Lucas Fernandez withdrawn because of injuries, a blow to the visitors, but they've probed away. Tomoki Hayakawa has been the busier of the two keepers. But it's looking increasingly likely we're going to go, uh, go in at nil nil. And freeze let that one go. Nobrazato. Kibishaba. Work this one forward quickly. Yosiera, Kagawa turns away from one challenge. Well, that is half time. No goals in an opening 45 that Sarezzo Osaka have had the better chances in. No doubt about that. Lucas Fernandez, unfortunately injured in the opening 45, looked like a hamstring. Haven't really seen too much of Alexander Chavric, who had such a Good debut last week for Kashima Antlers. He needs to do better. So that's Osaka. Have been good going forward, but have just let that killer touch inside the Kashima Antlers penalty area. And Tomoki Hayakawa there walking off has had to make two really good saves. Been an intriguing opening 45 here. No goals though, unfortunately, but at the break, it is Kashima Antlers nil, Sadetsu Osaka nil.
Welcome back and a change ahead of the second half. Tomoe Fuji has come off and Yuma Suzuki is the player that's come on. Suzuki, who was the top goal scorer for Kashima Antlers season, joining the fray. 14 goals, only missed one game last season, was a terrific player. Might just mean a little bit of a shake-up in those advanced areas. Yuma Suzuki, who did come on as a substitute last weekend and comes on for a second 45 here, and a big second 45 for Kashima Ant, as you sense, because haven't really been good enough in the first 45, so that's Osaka, much the better side, but crucially, they failed to take advantage of their territorial play. Certainly had more of the ball in the opening 45, but could not make it pay. Get set then for the second half, Kashima Antlers nil, so that's Osaka nil after 45. 
underway for the second half. Kashima Antlers, who were brilliant against Nagoya Grampus last weekend with a 3-0 away success, haven't quite put it together in their first home game of 2024. But a change here with Yuma Suzuki coming on to lead a little bit of height and weight to that attacking line. Let's see if it pays off for the home side. They were really good in opening 45s of football last season. They did rank third after 45 in the J League, but of opening 45 here, which belies those stats, certainly, what can they do in the second half here? Looking to play a little bit more on the front foot, that is for sure. Here is Suzuki. Immediately you sense that there's a little bit of a change of energy with Suzuki now on. And suddenly it's said that Sawasaka have got to do a little bit more defensive work. Cleared away by Nishio. Flickback by Antai. Sweeping ball inside the penalty area, or claiming a penalty, but two players just coming together. Never going to get that, I don't think. It does feel like a different type of game all of a sudden, doesn't it? Suzuki. Running field towards Okuno. Positive from Kashima Antlers. We just sensed towards the end of the first half that Kashima Antlers were maybe better placed to make a better fist of getting the three points. And the start of this second half, they've been much more positive. This is Chavrich now looks to try and flick it in field for the movement of Nakama. Here is Nakama, twists and turns away from Maikuma. Shows good strength there against Kapishaba. Ball somehow stays in play. Clever to the edge of the penalty area for Higuchi, who will turn. This is Sano. I haven't seen anything of him, really. And now Suzuki has been very much involved since coming on. Nono. Suzuki. Javrich waits inside the penalty area. Good movement inside the box as well. That's a clever ball. Higuchi will kill towards the far post, cleared away. Segakao will flick back in, but it was an awkward touch from the defender. That's fast feed from Leo Sierra, and suddenly it is Seretsu Osaka who are on the move. Can they counter quickly here? The space over on the left-hand side. Good movement from Tameda, the substitute. Tanaka gives it away and then manages to win it back.
So first five of this second half, intriguing so far. With Kashima Antlers suddenly finding a little bit of industry and energy. Space on this near side for Tomeda. The ball wasn't quite good enough. It's played back by uh, towards Hayakawa, who will clear. Sato. Space for Tameda. Cleared away by Ueda. That's a free kick. Suzuki getting one in the side. Four goals against the Reso Osaka in his career. This is the eighth time that he played against them. Only been on the losing side once. Did score the winner when they met last September. 1 0 home success. Second spell now at Kashima Antlers and just too shy of 50 goals for the club in the J League. No goals so far. Do sense it won't take much for this fixture to burst into life. Popovic at the break. And ready to restart with Tamuki Hayakawa. Long towards Chavrich. Does manage to flick this one in, should be cleared away. Nobrazato's effort is charged down. Chavrich uses his strength well and then. Well, disappointingly for Antlers here, Higuchi was in an offside position. It's not uh, Chavric that's been penalised there. Higuchi... You can see here, just wanders. And then as he's played back towards the number 14, it is an offside position. Good call from the assistant, only a few yards away from the action. Two might just work out. That's a really clever touch. And a fine block from Hiroaki Okuno. No, no. It's the Kashima Antlers supporters you can hear at the minute looking to get behind their side. Their average attendance last season just over 22,000 is being made by the home support at the moment. Nobrazato gives it away. Oh, it's towards Suzuki, but it's over his head. It's cleared away by Nishio. Still not completely clear, though. Kashima Antlers look to recycle. This is Nono, and now it's with Chavrich. Three inside the penalty area. Kill towards Suzuki, and the volleyed effort is wide. Suzuki's claim he was pushed. The shot should have been better anyway. Let's have a look at this, because I feel Suzuki got a shove in the back, but the volley should have been on target from that sort of distance. Hits him on the shin, doesn't it? Nakama scored a couple against Nagoya. Has to find the target there, he really does. Best chance of the match so far for Kashima Antlers. Not taken. It's a, a rather wild challenge, but uh, Kashima Antlers get away with that. Hayakawa, much more of an even contest since the restart. So that's all Osaka, though, always going to be dangerous on the counter. 
Graphic suggesting 4-4-2, but Suzuki's really been playing over on the right-hand side so far. Giving away. No, no. Rides one challenge, loses out. Not Rosato wins it back and goes again. Sierra calling for it. Cleared away by Segikawa. This is Chavrich. Funaki. Not it down for Kimoto Nono. Over towards Suzuki, over the head of the striker. Fed by, by Tanaka. Forward by Nishio. Kapishaba. Well, in. he's not been as effective over on that right hand side. We saw him start on the left in the first half where he was much, much better. It is Nishio. Funaki. Fire Kim. No, Kim's gone further forwards. Nabrazato. Oh, that was a little late. Uh, the referee might hold play here. Chavnich was the perpetrator. Went for the ball and was just caught, you can see, on the, uh, the bottom of the right thigh. Nabarazato lets it run through. Fonaki. Nabarazato. Leo Sierra through the centre. Pulled towards Tameda. Leo Sierra is calling for it. It's Leo Sierra! Turns brilliantly to put Serezo Osaka in front. Really good run from Tameda down the left hand side. And the substitute with a cross that's controlled and finished by Leo Sierra. And having netted 12 last season, he's off the mark for the 2024 campaign. Oh, it's good football, isn't it, from Serezo Osaka. They have been the better side by and large, but Kashima Antlers have come back at them in the second period. But they failed to pick up the movement of Leo Sierra inside the penalty area. The first touch is good. The second, definitive to turn and shoot beyond Hayakawa. And it's Kashima Antlers nil. So that's Osaka one. Sierra just before the hour. We'll see what Kashima Antlers are made of now, all right, that is for sure. Well, last season, Sadezo Osaka took the lead in 18 of their 34 J1 League matches. They won 15 of those 18. Really good record, but they did lose on three occasions. Defeat when leaving back in July against Sagantosu away from home. 1 0 up there before losing 2 1. Kashima Antler's last come from behind success was against FC Tokyo back in July, a 3 1 away success. Only time that they registered a come from behind victory in J1 League last season. Times conceding the first goal, one win, two draws, seven defeats. Have to book that trend here if they've got designs on making it two wins from two at the start of the campaign. Still half an hour plus to do it in your sense. Free kick.
Real test of character for Kashima Antlers. So much hope after a 3-0 away success against Nagoya on match week one. If they are beaten here, it'd be a real blow, and Leo Sierra might be in again here! Should have been two! Brazilian misses the mark. Looks an easier opportunity to me. Tomeda's flick was inch perfect. The cross from Akuno. Likewise, the header. Not good enough by a long way. All the power, no real precision. In a way, the way that Kashima Antlers have started this second half might have made it just a little bit easier for Sereto Osaka. They've not been the team that's had the bulk of the ball. They've been able to play on the counter. And they've taken advantage to lead. It should have been another. Suzuki chasing this one. That's all a bit awkward. It's all a bit late. And the yellow card offence. Last season, seven prior to that, after two and a half years at St. Troiden in Belgian football, healthy record 26 in 69. Navarazatu back up. Kim to go long. Suzuki wins the aerial duel. First time forward, Chavrich with some fancy footwork, then he loses out. Akuma. Nishio. Asking a bit too much, I think the ball had gone. Sierra inches it on for Kabishaba. Was he caught? Yellow card. Sega Kawa. The caution count is rising quickly. Suzuki, a good cheat. He could cheat and set a Sega Kawa all in the book. Sega Kawa suggesting that he didn't touch Kabishaba. Let's have another look. Mm. He got the ball, but did he follow through and get a bit of the man? for the centre-half. And a free-kick in a really dangerous position here for Sadezo Osaka. Didn't manage to score direct from a free-kick last season. And they strike early in 2024. Leo Sierra standing over this one. It's a Higuchi as well. Or a Funaki, I should say. So standing over this one. <laughs> Left of Fanaki, right of Neil Sierra. Centre half or centre forward, just the betting. It 
is Neil Sierra. Ayakawa grabs it at the second attempt. Zato with a clearance. Kashiba Antlers a goal down. Kapishaba for Seletso Osaka, another free kick. Changes. Gian Pereira is coming on. Segakao wants to come off. Uh, we're also going to see Shintaro Nago for Higuchi. Shintaro Nago, midfielder. And again, Pereira, a Brazilian. Okay, from Tarras, the Argentine side. Changes have been made. There's still more defensive work to do here for Kashima and as they've reverted to their first half type here. You know, Sierra has it again. Kapishaba keeps it in play and still has it. Kono. Kapishaba rides a couple of challenges. Kagawa. Well, back towards Kaga uh, Kagawa, but uh, easily cleared away. Does look like Suzuki maybe through the centre with Chavrich over on that left hand side now. We shall see. Side looks to clear. Suzuki can't quite help it on first time around. On a booking, doesn't want to slide in second time around. And Obrazato. Chavrich holds it up really well. Is there a counter potentially now for Kashima Antlers? For Kachinen. Is that midfield that's often been overrun in this second half and for much of the game for Kashima Antlers as well? Wida. That's the skipper again. Sikian Pereira on the right hand side. And I. to the left-hand side, but there's just no way through. So that's why Sakura really well organised. We mentioned their defensive stats from last season. They were good at the back. Not their luck on the odd occasion, but... Still managed some... Ten clean sheets, five away from home. And Sai will get another go. Suzuki, if required. Guillaume Pereira through the centre. Continues. And Pereira went down. Another foot towards Suzuki. It was a nice idea, wasn't it? From Hayato Nakama, but it didn't quite come off. Goal scorer is in trouble here. And this would be a blow for Akio Kokuki, who has already lost one Brazilian. But the response from Kashima Antlers has been poor. Since going behind, they haven't really uh, created anything. 
Sierra is coming to the sidelines here. Thumbs up would suggest that he's going to stay on. Maybe not, there is a change. Maybe for someone else. And Sierra not allowed back on just yet after getting a little bit of treatment. Changes elsewhere by the looks of things with uh, Hiroaki Okuno the number on the board. Sierra back on. Meanwhile, Sarazo Ozaka coming forward again through the centre. Akuno, whose number's on the board, incidentally, looking to score. Suzuki will flick it on. Chavrich will knock it down. Better from Kashima Antlers here. And Zai over on the left-hand side, looking to get forward. Nakama wants it as well. This is Chavrich. Takes a touch. Looks to play back on. It gets away from Antai. Ball has to be better. Whistle has gone anyway. How often have we seen that final ball for Kashima Antlers just letting them down? Oh, it looks like he's on, doesn't he, there? Played on by Obrezato, but uh, Obrezato stepped up a little late for me. Comes to nothing anyway. And here's the switch. With uh, Uejo coming on for Okuno. Come on in the previous game, Satoki Uejo. Shima Antlers need a goal from somewhere, from someone. Got a Sereso Ozaka player down at the moment. The uh, referee's going to hold play, and the Kashima Antlers uh, personnel are not happy at all here. Leo Sierra, who came back on after receiving treatment, he can't carry on. And the goal scorer is going to have to be subbed off here. This lot don't mind the fact that he's wasting a bit of time, but the vast majority of the Kashima Soccer Stadium think otherwise. Spearhead of the visitors' attack and scorer of the only goal so far. He's going to go off. There is the strike. Confidently dispatched. Just behind him, had to turn, control, and then spin and shoot. All in a blink of an eye, putting Sereso Osaka in front. But that's two Brazilians that have gone off injured now. How will that change the dynamic potentially for Sereso Osaka? Kashima Antlers be lifted by the absence of Leo Sierra. Suzuki lets it run, clever, and looks to curl. But it'll go down as a shot on target, and it was an easy save for Kim. But the combination play was there from Suzuki and Chavrich, and we haven't seen too much of that since Suzuki came on at half-time. Kashima Antlers come forward again. And Zai on the left-hand side, it's towards Chavrich inside the area, over his head. Giam will take a touch and curl in, it's towards Suzuki with a header. Awkward-looking clearance up into the air rather than away from Fonaki, and it will be a corner. 
15 minutes remaining here. Kashima Antlers looking for a level up. Home support just raising the volume a little. He's been involved, certainly. Nobrazato also coming off here. Yamashita and Akuda coming on. Tatsuya Yamashita wasn't in the match day squad last week. Ayato Akuda, a defender, is going to make his uh, debut. The 22-year-old, having initially started at uh, Gamba Osaka, didn't play a league game for Sadezo City rivals. Never make changes when you're facing a corner, they say, but Sadezo Osaka have whipped in towards Suzuki. It's going to be another corner. Further pressure on that, so that's what Osaka goal. Chavrich waits. Suzuki lurks in the swinger here. Towards that near post again, it ricochets up and it's saved, and then it's blasted back in, it's another corner. Kim forced it away and was injured in the process. All a bit awkward here. I don't think there's too much wrong with the challenge, but maybe just ran into the opposition player. A bit awkward and scrappy in the end. Does it hit the post? The player certainly does. Third corner in quick succession for Kashima Antlers looking to pile on the pressure. Flicked in again. Better clearance this time around. But it's going to come straight back at them towards Kapishaba. Did away by Nishio. Flicked on. Suzuki. Claims for a handball, not given, still not completely cleared. Shot on the turn, is blocked. Just unable to get a clear side of goal on that occasion. Okay, Chinin it was that was turning inside the area. But better from Kashima Antlers here. Is there a check here? Was there a handball? Not there. And it came back in. Ooh, now then. It did seem to strike an arm, but... Or was there a secondary shout? Yeah, I don't think there's anything wrong with a block. Oh, well, they come again, Chavrich. Guillaume, and then forced towards goal. That takes a deflection, another corner. Pressure really building. I thought the handball incident was earlier on in that uh, move. Suzuki getting in behind here. Chavrich actually slipped. Another corner. Shintaro Nago to take. Out swinger this time. Whips in low, clear to the edge of the area. To move, just lost a little potentially. This is Nago again. So let's Osaka have the opportunity to get players outside of the area. Very high line here. If the pass is good, they could be in behind. Two players down in red, cleared away by Sereto Osaka. And suddenly, with 10 minutes or so remaining, there is a little bit more space to maneuver for both sides. So that's Osaka looking to alleviate the pressure a little. Hey, hey, ball, hey, ball. Cleared away by Sano. 
Taken down towards Chavrich. Gian for Suzuki. Space over on the right-hand side if they can switch it. This is Chavrich to try and play it in field. Surely caught after the ball had gone. Nothing doing. Kechinen. And Zai. Has the rally come too late for Kashima Anlas? Much better the last 10 minutes. And another high line here from Seretsu Osaka. There isn't that much pace in behind for Kashima Anlas. Chavric and Suzuki would not say they're going to threaten in that sense. Infield by Nono, who checked his run, didn't go again, should have. Nakama, another striker, four goals last season. Seasonal debut for Yuki Kakita. Goals match week one. Easily intercepted, far too easily. Forward by Maikuma, Kapishaba. <laughs> Kept in play by Maikuma. Two players battling for the ball, just left it. That one went out for a corner. It's a goal kick. Well, this should be a big win. The way successes were thin on the ground for so that's Osaka last season. a point against FC Tokyo on match week one to move on to four points from two. Having beaten the Kashima Anlas away, that would be a real achievement for Akio Kogiku side. Over for Antai. Still might work. Oh, that's a free kick. And Kapishaba was late. And a free kick here in a dangerous position. Doesn't really catch him in the bottom of the boot, but still a late challenge. Taranago stands over the free kick here. Little in distance, maybe against the shot. Five to his right on the edge of the penalty area. In Atlas Red, waiting for the delivery. Kikita amongst them. And it comes, nodded home! Ueda the skipper to make it 1 1 with five minutes remaining. Brilliant delivery, pinpoint accuracy. And a thumping header from close range from the captain. 
just about onside, I think. We might have to have another look at this. The Serezzo Osaka players all turn to the assistant, some with arms up. This was close. Will it count? Lenko Popovic believes it will. It looked like a perfectly timed run to me, but it was fairly tight. Determined to get on with it. Two last season, won this, and that is a big one. It will stand, it was a brief check. Kashima Antlers with their tails up now. Well, it's been a battle, but you sense that the home support might be able to will in another here. Serezzo Osaka on the back foot for the last ten or so. Five minutes plus added on time. Can we see a winner? For either Kishima and Lazul, Serezzo Osaka, they need to slow things down a little. Former Japanese international hasn't been playing for the national side for the last few years. Back after two and a half years in European football with Nîmes in November 22. Also had a spell in Belgian football. And having netted his last goal in a 3-0 home win against Consadori Sapporo, this one might be much more meaningful at the minute. It gives Kashima Antlers a point and no more. Are we to see even later drama? That's another late challenge, and it's going to be another card, and it's Shinji Kagawa. He's been a little quiet in this fixture that goes into the book. That's why. So makes a bit of a meal of it, but it's a challenge from behind that goes straight through the player. Antlers in the ascendancy. Flicked on by Chavric, determination from Kakita to keep it in. Chavric to turn himself, back towards Nono. Kachanen. Nono down the line, Chavric calling for it, just about kept in play. Kakita to try and turn and wins a corner, and they've been dangerous from set pieces, as we know. Headed goals last weekend, one here. Eighteen last season was the most in the league, and you can see why. Two minutes remaining. Shintaro Nago, whose delivery led to the goal. What can he do from the corner? Suzuki waits. Runners to the near post. Really good hands from Kim Jin Kun. And the Korean keeper makes it look easy. And a set to that Osaka on the counter. Kabishaba through the centre. Michel. need to keep the energy up if they're going to steal a, a late victory. You do sense that Sadatsu Osaka might be happy with a draw. Probably would have taken one ahead of kickoff. his luck a little bit here, but it's a really determined run. The finish is uh, flicked up, and it's a corner. Kuma racing forwards. That's where he gets the luck. Not quite sure it took a deflection here. Yeah, let's take another look. I think he's lucky to get the flag kick. to the away support. Holding to the near post, flicked down rather than towards goal. That's another corner, though. K -K 
wicket of Anaki. Another in swinger from the left foot up. That goes the signal. Again, it's good delivery. Cleared away by Kakita. Seven minutes of added on time. Not 100 percent soon where we've got seven from, but Shima Antlers might take it. So that's so Osaka will believe that maybe they can grab a late winner. Kamishaba. For Naki. For Okuda. Chavrich. Kabishaba doesn't win it back. It's all a bit scrappy. Front forwards here for Kakita to try and chase. It's a defensive header that might not work out. And Suzuki could be in on the left hand side. Spins away from the substitute. Kakita waits inside the penalty area. Again to turn. It's whipped in. Oh my word, no one can get a touch to it. Chavrich stretched, Kakita stretched, and round the back, Nono was flying in as well. Nobody could get the definitive touch. Chavrich, Kakita, nor Nono. It'll go down as a misplaced pass, but it was so, so close to a late winner. to blast long. Hey. It's gone the other way, Chavrich doesn't realise. He's out. Okuda. And again. Atlas with renewed determination will clear, but they've given the ball away. Again, tries to win it back. This is Nisho. Well worked to the left hand side. Kibishaba waits inside the area, but Suzuki will come forward. Oh, that's a poor touch. Nishio manages to win it back and it's flicked towards the edge of the area. Anywhere will do for Suzuki. Chavrich's touch. Here is Kagawa. Now he's with Nishio. Four minutes of the added on seven remaining. And suddenly it's Sedatsu Osaka that are coming on strong. Shaba. Switch of play by Funaki. Kabishaba. Kakita's going to chase it down, but he needs a bit of help with the press here. way outside of his box on this right-hand side, but gets good purchase on the clearance. Suzuki tries to flick it forward. Chavrich's touch was a little weak. Sedezo Osaka have it again. Okuda. One or two players running on empty here. Chavrich amongst them, you sense. Suzuki came on at half-time. He's got a bit more energy in the, uh, in the legs. It's a free kick. One last opportunity for either of these two sides. So that's Osaka. And have battled well and have come back at Kashima Antlers after being pegged back here. Funaki. 
Almeida towards Akuda. I think that's a goal kick. Hayakawa to punt it long. 90 seconds remaining of the added on seven minutes. Ayakawa to this near side. Javric will jump and win the header. Taken down by Kagawa. It's a bit awkward and it's given away. And Tai. Has it again, the fullback. Just has to hold things up a little bit. Here's the goal scorer. Ueda. So might be able to get to this one. He can get there ahead of the keeper. Can he not quite? It just spins away from him. Looked like he was offside anyway. Huge clearance towards Capishaba. And then Hayakawa will put it back with a bit of interest. And then it's off the underside of the studs of Maikuma. Some players really struggling out there at the moment. Hishusano. Uh, just asking how many seconds left here. This will be the last act of a well contested affair. So that's Osaka will believe that maybe they should have got the three points, but let's praise the battling qualities of Kashima Antlers. who look like they've done enough for a draw, unless. Pulled in and flicked on, but flick wide. That might be it. Seven. Ayakawa. It's a punting long, you can see there. Akio Kogiku saying, Is that it? And the referee does indeed blow for the 90. Well, both them beaten after two match weeks of the new season. Kashima Antlers were firm favourites to pick up the three points here, but went behind. The Osierra's beautifully taken goal. Just inside the opening exchanges of the second half was cancelled out a wonderful header from Naomichi Ueda the captain of Kashima Antlers after a terrific ball in from the substitute Shintaro Nago from a free kick Suzuki battled hard after coming on as a second half substitute didn't see the best of either Kagawa from Mesaretsu Osaka point of view or indeed Chavric the new signing for Kashima Antlers and it was a bit of a battle in the end and honours even at the 90. Full time, Kashima Antlers won, Sadetsu Osaka won. <laughs> Two coaches embrace, plenty of respect between Ranko Popovic, who did coach Sadetsu Osaka for one season and just 13 games a few years ago. And uh, Akio Kogiko is putting something together pretty good at uh, Sadetsu Osaka. They've only managed two draws so far from the start of the season, but you sense that the wins are just around the corner. 2-2 with FC Tokyo on match week one, and a much more impressive in many ways 1-1 draw with Kashima Antlers today. The changes didn't really work for Kashima Antlers. Chavrich ran out of gas a little bit. Yuma Suzuki did well when he came on. More expected, maybe, of the likes of Guillem Pereira. Over the course of the season, he's new to the league, of course. From Sanetso, Osaka's point of view, Kakuro Funaki was good at the back, and by and large kept that man quiet. He will have a good season, though, you sense, Alexander Chavric. Sanetso Osaka's supporters applaud the efforts of their team. They've made the journey from Osaka to Kashima here. And I think when the dust settles, we'll be pretty pleased with the point. They could argue they were the better side, certainly for the opening 45 minutes. And from a Kashima Anlers point of view, well, they came here hoping for a victory in their home opener off the back of that really good success against Nagoya. Let's get some post-match reaction. Well, 
ただ追いつきました同点ゴールのシーン振り返っていただけますかそうですね、まあ、もうあの時間帯自分が点取るしかないと思ってセットプレーに入っていきましたし、まあ、そ